the tools that we need for our lesson today, looking at other stoichiometric calculations. Please make sure that you have not only your note pack open to page 5, but you'll need your periodic table, polyatomic chart. We will be writing formulas, of course. I have my stoichiometry roadmap as a great visual of trying to figure out how many steps, where am I starting, where am I going, so please make sure that's out as well. And, of course, my calculator. So as we begin today, looking at what we call other stoichiometric calculations, it really is nothing more than conversion factors using our problem-solving diagram. We can solve any category of stoichiometric problems using our stoichiometry roadmap. Remember in chemistry when we measure matter, we can count, we can weigh, or we can take a volume. If we're given the number of particles, we see Avogadro's number as the unit of exchange into the mole. Of course, given a gram, it's formula weight, the word is molar mass, that leads us into the mole. If it's a volume of a gas, and it must be a gas to do volumes, we use the molar volume value of 22.4. Counting, weighing, or taking a volume, all roads lead into the mole. Knowing that any good stoichiometry problem has the heart of want over given, and heading back out to the desired unit. The three steps of stoichiometry, divide, ratio, multiply. When we look at our notepad examples that read other, what we're saying is that it doesn't matter if I give you particles, mass, or volume, whatever the unit is, we'll find that correct exchange and head into the mole. Let's take a look at our first example. Reading it with me, it says, how many molecules of oxygen are produced when a sample of 29.2 grams of water is decomposed by electrolysis. Remember, our stoichiometry is only as good as our equation writing skills. I'm noticing the pattern of chemical change is given to me by the word decomposed. The pattern of decomposition suggests one reactant breaking down into simpler products. When I first read my example problem, I tend to just ignore all the numbers and try to pull out reactants and products. Oxygen is being produced. If I think about what that means, on the right side of my arrow, I know oxygen molecules are being produced. They're being produced from the decomposition of water. Water is our reactant. The term electrolysis just simply means to zap it with electricity. Often you'll see that written out as a little lightning bolt. That's the best I could do for that. If this binary compound is decomposing, our helpful hint suggests binary compounds simply break down into their elements when heated or treated with electricity. Water is a binary compound. It's made of two elements, H's and O's. And it told us as part of the story problem that oxygen was produced. The other element must be hydrogen. When H's and O's are written, we know that they are diatomic. Remember our sentence, horses need oats for clear brown eyes. And those are the seven naturally occurring diatomic molecules of which O's and H's do indeed belong to that club. We have a great skeleton we need to balance. When water decomposes into its elements, the H's come out fine, but the O's aren't balanced. So I back up and correct that by doubling the water and come back to repair the H's. A 2 to 1 to 2 stoichiometric ratio balances my equation. Once I get my, my uh, equation written, I consider that a recipe, then I go back and I reread the problem for the numbers. It's asking me how many molecules, maybe I'll just bookkeep that and put that right under my target, how many molecules of oxygen are being produced 
when 29.2 grams of water, and I'll just tuck that under there so I can keep track. I'm given the mass of water in a gram, ask for the number of molecules of oxygen. Given a mass, calculate a molecule. Take a peek at your stoichiometry roadmap. The given is the mass of water. This is our starting point. We want to know all the way over here the number of molecules. That's what representative particles mean, molecules, atoms, or formula units. To move all the way from the left to the right, I can count three conversion factors. Step one, go into the mole. Step two, mole-mole ratio. Step three, we're going to use Avogadro to head out to the world of particles. Let's begin by writing what we know. 29.2 grams of water is our given. I like to set all three parentheses down so I can see my target. We have to get all the way to the molecules of O2, and I use MLC to represent molecules. Knowing that the heart of our problem is the stoichiometric ratio of want over given. In our first step, to move from mass of given, which is mass of water, into moles of water, we've got to use the molar mass as our conversion. That molar mass of that given compound water. So that first conversion will look like one mole of water set over the molar mass of 18. Notice how grams are canceling and we're at the mole unit. This first conversion has moved me from mass to mole and here I'm standing on the road map. To set up our ratio, the heart of our problem, we think want over given. We want to know the oxygen, that's our target, its coefficient is a one. On the top, we'll place one mole, that's what we want. And on the bottom, we started with water, its coefficient is a two. Want over given our stoichiometric ratio of one-half. The last thing we need to do is head north in our stoichiometry roadmap. We want to count. We want to count the individual particles. When we go from mole to particles, we trip over Avogadro's number. We see that there is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of oxygen in every one mole of oxygen. Every number has a label and a unit every step, every time to ensure full credit. Please grab your calculator and follow the key sequence with me. Hit 29.2, our given mass. In the first conversion parenthesis, it's showing us divide by 18. 18 is on the bottom, so we divide. 